Hey, Don here. Well, clicked on the wrong camera. That's my cam one pointing at the uh, new monitor, the new uh, what's the name of it, Scepter TV. And there's the camera I meant to hit cam four on me. Uh, <clears throat> and that's the uh, Comry 4K camera. Well, it's not doing 4K on the USB. It does. I always forget 12 something, 1280 something. It's one step down from 1080. Um, so let's just do. I'm just doing it. I've got first time to have everything hopefully set up on the on the Dell. Oh, I don't know why I'm calling it Dell every time I say it now. The uh, HP DL. That's why I do it. DL for some reason that translates to Dell in my brain. HP DL 380 G7 server, which I've been using every day for months now. I don't remember how long when I started when I got it going up, but I'm just now getting the uh, OBS Studio installed and getting everything set up. Spent a day just trying to, you know, getting things, getting it in there, getting it installed, get, importing my uh, scenes and sources and, and all that. And uh, spent another evening from about four, probably in the afternoon. And it's ten. It's eleven forty-seven, almost midnight now. Finally, ready to <laughs> had to stop and eat supper. And anyway, finally ready to try it. So. Um, Let's go. That was Cam One and Cam Four. Cam One's pointed at the monitor in case I needed to do a show of the monitor. You know, the desk, the monitor that way, the desktop that way. So let's go to the desktop. Look around the desktop. I'm using the SC58, and I have uh, Cam uh, Camera Two is being used as a mic. Uh, it's hooked up through uh, through Bluetooth. Um, I bought a Bluetooth, it's a transmitter and receiver, but I'm using it in re receiver mode. It's plugged into my uh, my Behringer mixer. And uh, now that I need want to show it, I'm on the wrong one. Uh, <clears throat> so you can see my Behringer mixer here and my VM2 effects. And there's the stand. It's a guitar stand that I have the camera 2 on there. Anyway, SM58 in channel 1 and channels 3 and 4 for line level inputs. I have the... Uh, Kind of hidden back there. I'm not going to move it. I don't want to mess anything up. I have the um, Bluetooth receiver plugged in to there. So the uh, um, I'll turn it up. For, I don't want to mess up. It's going to be an echo. It's going to be behind the SM58, but I'm just going to let it do it right now. Just to, so here's so both here's of them, both of them. And you'll hear a pretty good hear a echo. Pretty good little echo. And. Uh, <coughs> It's, I can't even tell if they're both working unless I uh, either turn well, I turn on the output to the speaker or uh, put on a headset. Uh, so um, and still turn on the output to send it out. But anyway, um, I'll only you know I'll only ever well I only ever use like when I do the Wi-Fi wireless mic I use, only use one or the other. Uh, even if they were really close, they're still going to be a noticeable. They're, just, they're never going to be exactly the same, even if it was, say, a, a wired and wireless professional wireless mic. I mean, that's, I used to make sound for bands, and I learned, that was one of the first things. Uh, first things I learned about how to use was wireless mics back in the early '90s. But uh, we used to use them a lot with my friend's sound company that I uh, helped work helped work for or helped out sometimes. Let's see. So let's go back to the desktop. And uh, but I mixed a lot. I mixed all for about. Well, I started learning to mix in 1983, but in the early 90s I started mixing for bands. Started learning to mix for bands, and then I mixed for bands. For, I always wanted to say 12 years, but actually mixing for bands is probably more like 10 years. I think I'd just kind of say, well, I mixed for 12 years because I kind of did it here and there from 83 on up. You know, uh, I didn't do it all the time, but from throughout. In, uh, all of the 90s, I, I did it almost, you know, all the time, almost every weekend, uh, or for a good long, several years anyway, uh, but uh, most of the years. Okay, we're going to go to the, uh, <clears throat> this is the video I'm making right now, test video in Crusader, and here's resource usage. How about that? It has, it says 21%. That's about the same as it would be. Well, it'd be more than that right at this point in uh, 
and Lenovo i5. Now this is that's doing some work. That's probably the, might be the most I've ever seen it do. It's uh, I'm trying to get it up there where you can see it. You got 24 cores to work with. That's really cool, and it's spreading it out through all of them too. It's just up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, I mean, I shouldn't have any trouble whatsoever. That this server has uh, two 12-core processors, 20, with the hyper-threading. That's 24 cores presented to the operating system. As you can see, uh, I've never seen an app that didn't, you know, kind of. It's usually like you can barely see it registering, but I've never seen anything. I use all the cores, it spreads it out real, really well. And uh, so right now we're using 5.5 .5 gig of 62.5 gigabyte. Now that's a lot more memory usage than when, uh, well it would be, than, than when on the Lenovo i5, it's a quad core with four gig of RAM and I streamed on it, but I was only doing 1080p. And what I'm doing here, I guess I can really show it. Well I could if I looked in screenshots. Well I'm not making a video about so I won't show it, but uh, I get off of that. That's that's using a lot more resources. I hear it ramping up. Oh, that's good. That uses a lot of resources. Making that graph. So let's get out of that. That's still just fine. I don't think it'll be a problem. But uh, okay, I've got I've got uh, I've got an eight-core video card in it. Uh, I forget what it's called now. The XF. X or something like that's the brand, but uh, the video card uh, handles. Uh, <coughs> uh, I'm trying to say, I'm run, I, I'm using a, a 4K television as my monitor now, so I can actually see 4K when I display it. Now, like I was saying, I'm not. I am. Uh, I, I am. Uh, I'm not streaming 4K, I'm, I'm capturing 4K, I'm recording in 4K to the hard drive, but I'm, but it's it's jumping it down, I can't remember the right word now, uh, it's taking it down to uh, 1080p to send it out to uh, YouTube, well it's not, I'm only recording right now, I'm not, I'm not sending it to YouTube right now, but if I were, it would be doing that, let's see, how are we doing on Where it says it's using 50% of the CPU at 30 frames per second, but it doesn't say, you know, no lost frames or anything like that. So well, where does it say that? I don't know. It says, I think it just comes up and tells you that there, it's not being able to keep up, but we'll do that, I think. But uh, first test I did, I did a, uh, it ran a wizard, and it recommended doing MKV. Uh, it might be... Uh, as far as the streaming goes, I know it said it's it, that, that Wizard set it for uh, four thousand, I think, megabits per second. And I noticed the old the settings in the old version was I, I had worked and worked on that to get it to work good, and I think it was like twenty five hundred thousand twenty five hundred megabits. And then I changed it to FLV because it was acting up and not doing so great. And then I changed it to FLV, and it did I, it did fine, I believe. Other than I didn't have everything set up yet or, and all that. Uh, and then uh, what I'm doing right now is uh, it's, you know, 30, whatever the, I can't remember the numbers for 1080p either, but it's, uh, I guess I should have got a screenshot of that. I'm going to do that for myself here. Let's see. I just don't know what's in the, what's the newest screenshots in there. I think a couple of them are, uh, well, that's, yeah, looking at resource usage and then uh, the last time when I was doing some tests, setting things up. Oh, the, the, uh, at, at 4K, now I realize I'm at, I'm at such a higher resolution. Firefox was just really kick, uh, really working the machine hard just trying to set up that camera, just using the preview and the settings portion of, uh, of, uh, it's not anything like well what we were just now using, but it was surprising. <laughs> it, it would slow him down. I'd keep having to click, uh, turn off the video, and turn it back on because it would just lock up. The video would lock. Up. See there, you can kind of see that it's it's not. I mean, it's nothing like what I'm using right now streaming. Though. Well, I'm not streaming yet. Uh, I should be able to do this though because if I don't, if I set it to you know record in 1080p, but I'm working in a 
in the 4K resolution, you know, it makes it really just, you know, that's some video is worth watching. Now, that's where I don't know how in the world, where and how many screenshots could be two, could be 20 in between. Uh, uh, where I took a screenshot of the setup, of, I know I took a screenshot one or two today of the setup. <coughs> Uh, of OB, well, I was setting up, resetting up OBS, checking through the settings. So anyway, that's camera four. Let's just go back desktop. I'm losing track, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to have to switch to the other mic at some point. But that's okay. Uh, I don't. I always thought that was a total of all the CPUs, but if you look up there. Well, maybe it is because uh, it jumps 20, 16. I saw 50 something. Maybe it really is. I mean, look at the graph. Maybe it really is basically an average of about, oh, yeah, 22%, not half. Okay. So, uh, so there's the desktop. M1 back up on the monitor there. Um, something up there, right? It's a bit behind. Look at that. I did it a while ago, and I was like, oh, look at it. It actually kind of makes it a little sharper. But see, these these phones are only two megapixel cameras. They just can't. Uh, at least I'm not where I've got it. It's crooked. It's not straight on, but it it's not having to be zoomed either to show the monitor. And as big as that monitor is, too, you know, it's a lot, a lot bigger than a 23 inch monitor. This is a what is it? 42 or four? I think it's 43 inch. Yeah, I keep I've, before I've called it 49, but that's the TV in the living room, mom's old TV that I need to go put in. I've got her a new TV too. You know, they rate them at one size, but the actual size is usually an inch less. But hers is a 55. This one's a, I think it's called a 43. And then the other one is a 49, I think, actual 49. Uh, and so then anyway, here's the cam four and the uh, picture of the monitor right now. Didn't have really any other thing to aim it at. So I thought, well, I'll just do that in case I need it. Plus, I wanted to see how it worked. And I don't have camera two on because I'm, I've got it on my lapel, my lapel mic plugged into it going through the Bluetooth. I'll test that out in a minute. And uh, so I can't use camera two. If you try to go to camera two, so you like, here's two and four. I just went ahead and kind of put camera four where I thought it should be um, if camera two was there. I'm kind of guessing by the rest of them, one and four. That, that's what it'll be like, but it'll be. Uh, two and four instead of one and four. And um, for a desktop, I do stuff like that sometimes. Too. Well, that's two and that's four, five, four, three, four. It's misclicked. So there's just camera four. It's not a very good angle, but sometimes I, well, last time I put it a lot further away, and I thought, well, that's okay, but I'm not sure if I like it, but it is better than I've just clicked. This thing, uh, that's about as close as you can get without it getting just flat blurry. It's not good at being close anyway. Um, and then there's foreign desktop, what I was talking about. So uh, especially I noticed now between where I have it now and where I had it last time, since I'm looking way up high, it really doesn't looks better. Uh, and I can't set it. I used to have this one that's it's on camera. It has camera one on it. I used to have, uh, I can't see and read anything. Where's one and four? Oh, okay. One and four. Uh, I'm just tired of this. Uh, I used to have it, yeah, you can kind of see this guitar stand that I've got it mounted on. Uh, it actually gets it in the general area, but you know, it really needs to be right here where my face is. That's the best place to have that camera aim at the monitor, especially, well, especially at this monitor. Now it would need to be up higher. Um, so anyway, uh, and the tripod that I, well, I well, actually I used to use my, a mic stand behind me as a tripod, you know, to, and I'd get it close as I could, but I couldn't. I had to go back a foot or two from this chair or else I'd knock it over. But it's up in the window holding my security camera right now. It has been for a long time. I've never got it installed outside. It's just pointing out the window. <coughs> One of my security cameras. So anyway, um, that uh, lost my train of thought. I spent. I bet I spent two hours today trying to get that to where I could get to set still and everything. <coughs> I tried it back there. That's where I did have it setting for a while, just to get it out of my way. 
anyway. Um, should have just. I just wanted to do something quick, you know. I should have just did something real, <laughs> something that I thought would be the best thing. And spent two hours doing that. I probably would have spent thirty minutes to an hour doing that. <laughs> but uh, you never know. So, uh, well, the Interscope is on. And I've got my. Still looks fine. Let's see. It's a sure sticker. Oh, it's not going. Oh, it just looked funny because it was on and out. Okay. If I just do it like that. No, let's just let's straighten it out. It's just some. It's just something I grabbed here. And that thing, if you want to get it, where if I'm looking at it right side up and straight, then I have to mess and mess and mess with it because that. Long stiff cable doesn't want to stay with the, uh, the endoscope. Okay, and there's uh, endoscope and cam one, cam two. Of course, this cam two is not on. Uh, endoscope and cam four. And we'll look at the exit titles. I'm not ready to quit yet because I'm still half confused. Oh, yeah, well, let's go back to the desktop. Well, actually, let's go to cam four. Usually I go to the desktop because I always do my mic switching on the uh, on the uh, keyboard, you know, to, in OBS Studio. But I have since I have, I always wanted to do this. Um, I always wished I could have the wireless mic going straight to the mixer because it uh, going into the mixer and then from there go everything, you know, everything in the mixer goes through the V amp with the effects, uh, noise gate compressor, and a little reverb, which is actually an anti reverb setting. That that skips the talking, you know, and uh, makes it sound better. And so then out of there, straight to the computer. And at this point, I have a USB sound card plugged into the server. And that's the th one of the main. Th the last time I tested it, I just did it, left everything set the way it normally is, and it was completely distorted. And I didn't dawn on me till after I got quit and went to bed that uh, I should have, you know, turned down the main output on the. Uh, first, I was thinking the mixer, and I thought, no, I should do it on the VM. So I fiddled with that for first thing, you know, and got that all sounding good to me in the headphones. And then through the, I went ahead and, uh, first I monitored it coming out of here to get a good idea. There's an earphone output. Got to see where that point was where it would quit distorting and where it would sound better. And then I hooked it all up to the computer, and then I, uh, I listened on the speakers. You can turn on the monitor in in the in the OBS Studio, uh, but then uh, and then I uh, <coughs> um, I just saw the USB cable for the endoscope, and it's sticking up. It's not all the way down in. I bought me a USB hub, and that's how I'm getting it on over to the computer. I've got my my mouse and keyboard. Well, my KVM switch, which has the mouse and keyboard plugged into it into the hub and then also I have my USB camera. It's a USB 3.0 hub and it has a powered, it has a, a wall warp, you know, to give it power. It doesn't just depend on the power of the computer. And that's the way to get, if you're going to get a hub, get one that has a, a power supply with it. Um, and it also has two charging ports. One that will go from uh, 3 to 12 volts or 5 to 12 volts and the other one's just 5 volts and it works really well, and I've already tried the USB camera there on it. I wouldn't put a bunch more stuff in there, but I think I did have the camera and the uh, wireless dongle and the and the KVM switch, which is the USB off the KVM switch. It's just my mouse and keyboard, or my regular mouse and keyboard. But uh, anyway, I want to switch. Yeah, I'll stay like this on the camera, and uh, I really really won't know. That's the thing. I won't know if I'm doing it well <laughs> unless you can't see that. You could if I did. Uh, I'll go ahead and go to the desktop so you can see what it is I'm actually doing. Okay, so I right-clicked on the gears here for the mic aux channel. Or you can do it anything that has audio. Uh, that's a quick way to get into it anyway. I think you can do it a couple. Of, you can. I know you can do it at one few other ways but anyway 
Uh, actually, it never opens up wide enough. So, oh, shoot. You know, that's what... Uh, dang it. Let's just close it. It gets more confusing things on the screen. You can do that while you're, while you're streaming. And I'm, I've actually seen people do it, but I have tried doing it while I'm recording, and it usually depends on what it is you're doing. Some things will uh, lock things up, lock up OBS Studio. Okay, so that's what I did. Click right clicked on the click that and then click there. And you getting that I'm getting that video feedback uh, because I'm on the desktop. So anyway, I just wanted to make that bigger. Yeah, if I'm inside of the window, it doesn't usually give it a lot of trouble. I can put it up there and it doesn't drive my eyes so crazy, but it's still doing that. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to the camera so that it won't be working. That also the video feedback makes it work hard too. Putting that down there because okay, so uh, the mic aux that's that's the input that that the that the mixer and, and beat vamp are going to. Now I can put it on monitor only. Music. It sounds, oh yeah, okay. It sounds funny, and it, it, it has an echo because it's a little bit of a but you can switch. Okay, so what do I do to the okay. now here's what I do. both and then it sounded more normal but with an echo still sounds like when i listen to
Now I'm going to turn the monitor off, close that so I don't mess things up. Take the headphones off. Now, let's see. Uh, I think I'll switch the output back. I, I know th this is too fiddly. It's too much stuff to do. Let's see. Ch check that one more time. Okay, Leave that like that. And that's not, yeah, it's not hurting my input. Okay. I, so I can do that. And that really is, if I try to turn up the, uh, okay. If I try to turn up the uh, CM0108, One time they went, oh, when I plugged in the, uh, that's the USB camera's audio, and it went, it went to that when I plugged it in. I, was, I didn't have any audio. you got to pay attention to everything. Okay. Analog stereo output, multi-channel input. Okay, but the output is on the, uh, it's the sound card built into the video card is what it is. There's the video card right there. And uh, it's going on the USB, via the USB cable over to the uh, monitor. Okay, <clears throat> it works really good for that. Uh, and the TV has a pretty good uh, volume leveling system. Uh, keeps it from, you know, kind of brings up the lows and sh shuts down. It's kind of like a compressor, but not, <clears throat> well, not, not a harsh. It's different. It, it's... Um, if, if you've ever worked with audio software, there there is a couple of different ones. Like there's volume leveling. That's at least in Audacity. That's the one I've used the most in the last you know ten years. Uh, it tends to let's see what is it I can think of. Dynamic range compression is much better than the volume nor leveling or normalization that that's in most software. And so basically, uh, you know, they call it, in the TV, they don't call it dynamic range compression. But I, I discovered, uh, in the, the last time I did a real project with, uh, with uh, Audacity, um, it, um, I discovered the uh, dynamic range compression plugin. It was actually not... I don't think it was there the last, you know, several years ago since I really did any any big project with it or anything. Anyway, I discovered it and read up on it, learned how to use it. It's fantastic. And I, what I was doing is my uh, old neighbor Jeff, uh, a friend that gives, has given me a bunch, of, most of my old computers. He uh, he gave me that uh, Lenovo i5 that I, I used to use until now. <coughs> uh, bought the server, <laughs> but um, anyway. Uh, The dynamic range compression, it, it's like, it's kind of like the best of both worlds. It has a, the, uh, they, a lot of times they call it, the, uh, there's different modes by which you can volume normalize, normalize volume. And one of them is RMS. Root, it stands for root means square, but it's a mathematical formula that I don't understand. I'm terrible at math. But uh, that's something very common. And I always, you know, you've always, if, you're look, if you're looking at speakers and you're looking at amplifiers, you're always going to see an RMS value and all that. But it, what it, it does is it averages the highs and the lows, you know, the, the peaks. The me, it, I think RMS actually averages between the lowest, the medium, the mid, right, the med, medium volume, and then the highest volumes, and it tries to bring them together. But uh, what are what um, volume leveling or normalization, whichever one they call it in Audacity, I can't even remember right now. It brings the uh, lows up a whole lot. Doesn't bring that in, in the highs. Well, now my, with my hands up in there, it's making my, my white balance going up on my camera. That's the reason why I don't want to put it too close. I'm proud about that. Uh, anyway, it brings up the noise. It brings up the noise floor. That's what the, you call it is the noise floor. It brings it up, and then you can hear all the background noise. And no matter how I've said I've played with it for years. And I started learning about that back with uh, another Windows program back in, you know, 98, 99, early, early 2000s when I used to use 
but uh, and it's a pretty good one too. Can't think of the name of it now, but um, uh, anyway, um, the uh, dynamic range compression that that just really does what you want done. I, I knew I, I like I you know learned how to use compressors noise gates uh, back in the early 90s and used them all those years uh, hardware hardware based but you know even that hardware it, it did have it, it it was hardware there is strictly hardware compressors and, and noise gates and stuff uh, and the way you adjust them when you adjust them you're really um, you know you're adjusting like well voltages and stuff inputs and outputs uh, of the components themselves with like an attenuator you know little knobs you turn um, but then when they started uh, they kind of started adding digital along with the analog equipment and so most of what I used I think most had uh, well in the early 90s it might, it might like say one of, uh, one of those good Ashley uh, well DB no the, we had Ashley compressors that were fantastic uh, I mean uh, EQs that were fantastic the compressors that we used were DVX brand. They were good, and that's mostly what I used all the time. But uh, I remember in the late, when was it? The, yeah, the late nineties. Uh, I uh, got to help a, a guy that I was going to work for in a mixing sound. Uh, I got to help. He was going to buy a new sound system just for that venue, and uh, I, I went with him to pick out the gear, and he did, he had a certain budget, you know, and so we he couldn't afford to get, you know, he had to, we got uh, Behringer compressors, and they were mostly digital, and uh, you could tell the sound wasn't as good, it was choppy, the compressor didn't act just like a di you know like like I was used to. Uh, they had an automatic mode, which is convenient, but the, they didn't sound very good, and I didn't like them. But we did have one dBx compressor, for, so I got one dBx compressor for the house, uh, for the live PA, and then I got uh, we had then I had two channels of uh, of the uh, Behringer. Back then, Behringer was kind of just beginning to make a name for themselves. They were the bargain basement brand, you know. Well, they're a step up from bargain basement. They're kind of like mid range, but uh, I guess they still are. Uh, but the stuff is better now, I think. Than, this is better than what they used to have back in the 90s, up until early 2000s. And, um, well, this is very early 2000s. This here, this VM, I got it in a lot, 02 or 04 or something like that. I got this like last year, year before. Um, but anyway, uh, they used to have like a constant little hiss in, in, the, in, the, in the mixers and stuff, and that's gone now. You know, you, if, as long as you don't, overdrive some channel or something you know you know you know I haven't got had any noise in this and there was one that I used well late 90 yeah I guess it was a very late 90s it was good it was a 32 channel with the, with the, when they first started coming out with the on you know the onboard uh, the digital effects and stuff but anyway it was pretty good but um going in circles here I am making my video in my test now that's not even the video I planned on making uh, I start thinking these are going to be notes to self, and then I'm telling stories um, to myself because I'm not going to publish these videos. I usually don't publish them. Sometimes I decide I wish one of these, but anyway. Um, point, point, point. I've lost the whole thing. All right, so uh, the TV has AL. I keep on wanting to call it ALS, automatic level, ALC, automatic level control. It's something like that. It's not, uh, it, it took me a bit to catch on to what it even was. Well, I, just, I was just going through all the settings, and it's got a lot of settings. And when I first got it, and I was like, oh, what's that? Oh, well, forget it. And then I went, wait a minute. Kept thinking about what could that be, you know, and I realized, oh, that's, <laughs> that's volume normalization. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, it, I, tur I turned it on, and it, and, uh, Turned it off, turned it on, you know, check it back and forth. And finally, I turned aside. You know, it does. You can tell it makes a difference. So, I turned it on in this one, and then when I got my mom, and then I decided I like this one so much. I decided to get my mom one for the living room, and uh, I turned it on in there. And everything I figured out in this one, I turned it on in that. Both the same brand. One bad thing though, if my, my if my door's open, that door behind me, 
She'll oh, she's always forgetting to aim the remote at the TV in the first place. She'll aim it down the hall on accident, and I, and mine will be on the. I don't. I really don't even watch TV. I haven't watched TV one time on it yet. I just checked it, but uh, the uh, the output is just it's just a line level output, and and so I've got it going straight to uh, my patch bay that that goes on to my amplifier. Now, from the computer, that's fine. I control the volume from my keyboard, actually, on a, not real, a real knob on my keyboard, you know. And uh, and that's fine and dandy, but if that thing gets switched to TV, it's just nearly blow. It, it's making the speakers, you know, distort. It's just about blow, it blow you out of the house when you're... I'll be in the kitchen, get something to eat, and she'll turn it, she'll make it, flip it. So at first, I'll, okay, I'll turn the TV off before I leave the room. Well, she turned it on and got it set the TV, you know, it was, if she turned it on, it's going to be back where I left it in computer mode, right? But she turned it on and switched it to TV. And uh, couldn't figure out why she couldn't, you know, it wasn't work, remote wasn't working. She, and she, every time I, every, every once a week, I'll forget and leave my, I've started just either shutting the door or turning my speakers off, you know. But that's a real pain. And some, usually I'll forget to do anything, and then I'll be in there trying to get me something to eat, and all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that's the bad thing about that, and you can't change, you can't pick a new remote, I tried, I thought, well, maybe I can tell one TV to be on one remote key code, I'll change it on this one, you know, but you can't do that, it's just got one code, and they're, identical. you know, same brand, same remotes, they work on either one of them, so it could end up being an advantage at some point, but right now it's a pain, anyway, um, the uh, it works pretty good in the TV, so I, I the, the uh, level automatic level control, like on the tape recorders. Let's see what does it say on there? Well, let's not get into that. Anyway, that was the first time I encountered that back in the 70s. I had a I have a newer one. I have a TAC cassette deck, a dual cassette deck with uh, high speed dubbing and stuff. My old original one I got back in the 70s. I think I, I think the belt just stretched. It was started getting you know not going the right speed. Back in the back then, I couldn't. I tried to find a belt. I, I knew that it might be the belt, and I tried to find one. I couldn't find one, and uh, <clears throat> so I never did uh, fix it. But I never got rid of it. It's in the garage, some out there somewhere. And uh, I actually had it in here for years before I bought that one because uh, I used to use it. It had mic microphone inputs. You know, st it was a stereo, and it had mi two microphone inputs. And I could plug a mic into it. I could plug it my one of my FSM 58s into it. That's what I used to do before I got this mixer. I'd run it through the um, through the, t the tape deck and just put it on and record, but just put it in uh, pause. You know, sometimes I would just turn on the tape, but you could hear that tape rolling and it bugged me. But uh, and then I could use the input levels to get the right levels. Give give the uh, give a little preamp to my mic because you, if you just try to if you put an SM58 as a, as a balanced signal, and and, if you, and what you have to do to plug it into something that's looking for an unbalanced signal is you need to convert it. So, but that also loses signal strength. So, because uh, you know they don't the SM58s don't have batteries or anything in them. They just uh, I never have completely learned how they do that. How they can send a signal? It's a very low signal, but a low powered signal. It's almost like it gets you know static electricity out of the air or something, but you put the right circuits together, you do get a signal. Uh, and if you know, you know, if you know how to. If you're an engineer, if you know how to, I mean, I've watched some videos. And if I could remember the things I watched, I have watched lots of videos on microphones. If I could remember the things I watched, I could, I could build a microphone. Uh, but you know, I'm not going to be as good as this, so no, no point in it. Well, uh, but uh, well, I learned many years ago. Uh, when I was a kid. You know, you can plug a uh, I had a real uh, a Radio Shack cassette recorder. Well, first I had a reel-to-reel, -reel, so I don't know what brand it was. It, it quit working. But the uh, first one I had was a reel-to-reel, -reel, small four-inch reels, and then I, or three or four-inch reels. And then I got the Radio Shack cassette recorder. I used that until it quit working uh, for some for different things, you know. But, uh, I mean, one time I recorded a whole uh, David Bowie concert on uh, the midnight, I guess it was the midnight special or the Saturday night thing, whatever it was. I used to have... You know, rock music on TV at uh, Friday and Saturday nights. Back when, back in the 70s, they'd have uh, concerts like on TV. You know, and, uh, 
anyway, I, of course, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a. They did have Betamaxes. I didn't really know much about it. I'd heard of them. This was in '73 or '4. And uh, anyway, we just had a little portable TV and uh, didn't have any inputs and outputs, so I just had to set the mic right in front of the speaker, and I recorded the whole the audio of it. Not, of course, not the video, but. Um, Oh, okay. So I think yeah. I think they used to call it volume normalization or just normal yeah, they would just say normalize on there. Right by the and you could turn it on and off. I think it had that. I know my T Act did and it also had Dolby noise reduction. First time I ever saw Do anything about learned about what I learned about Dolby noise re reduction on my T Act uh cassette deck. Uh, it was a not a rack mount but a they call it what stereo component they call them components component units or something like that I've got my stuff in a rack uh, so. but it's not an audio rack it's a wider one it's for computers actually it's for telcos for telephone company central offices uh, guy I was used to, back in 2000 I had a job installing stuff and a guy that was taking this one out put a new one different kind in or something he Ask me if I, ask me and my buddy if we want it, and I said, "Yeah, I'll take it." <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> oh, I'm talking forever on this little Bluetooth. Well, I guess we'll find out. I know one thing: it's going to be behind my mouth, and so I really don't want it like this too much. So let's get back on the desktop put things back to normal and I'm gonna have to use my <coughs> headphones well I do know where to go to I have I now know where to set it at but I'm still gonna listen to it so uh, we're gonna go to this and turn on the monitoring of it and every time this doesn't show the whole area it's so aggravating that way now I just guess I don't have it loud enough okay Okay, now it's zero dB that, and that's two things you need to watch when you're recording to a computer. You can't just watch your meters here in OBS; they're good ones. These are the best meters, most most accurate meters I've ever seen in a program, except for maybe a DIW program like. Um, I've got a bunch of them on here. I really have only used one very much. Um, they are pretty complicated. Oh. Uh, a door, I think, yeah, that's one. That is multi-track. I've used it, and the non-mixer looks okay. It's got audio, uh, audio session. Well, anyway, I'm going over too much stuff. And there's, I think there might be another one that I have on here. I just, uh, what happened? didn't stop searching right there yeah non mixer sequencer session manager anyway um so we are back okay now let's put this back to normal I'll go to play the video to check it out and it won't be working I'll keep be all going in circles check one two okay but you got a you don't just you can't go by this meter it is very inaccurate and uh, usually 
it always goes right there, default at 100%, which really I believe is not taking anything away and not adding, you know, not gaining and not backing off. But uh, I got, the, I, I left it there and I uh, adjusted the output on the Behringer. Uh, what I did is I adjusted it till it sounded the best to me <coughs> through the headphones on it. Uh, the, the, the sound, I guess because the sound card, built-in sound card on the Lenovo, it must have been not a very, uh, it wasn't a uh, very sensitive input. Uh, let me get these headphones up. And uh, so um, <clears throat> I had to, I had to have uh, the the volume of all the overall volume for the effects and the, the master output up all the way to get it to uh, work right. And I still had to have uh, my mic input at about two, three, two or three, two o'clock, about, about two o'clock. These are knobs that turn and, and, but when they're in certain positions, I can't even see the, uh, where the little deal is. I can feel it if I'm, but when I can't see it, it's harder to figure out where it's pointing for some reason, even though I can feel it. Anyway, um, um, yeah, I'm going to leave. Usually I like to close this. I'm scared I'll mess something up, but I keep having to use it, so I think I'll leave it. As long as it's in, you know, behind OBS, I, won't really, I don't think I'll mess it up. I've left it on several times on accident. Okay, so um, I think I've tried everything out pretty good now, and should be back to yeah. Now see that whole time I was talking, I should have been on the fifty-eight because um, I forgot what I, what I was doing. Um, because that's really not going to be. It's it's just as bad. But one good thing is it should stay constant. It won't get like really far behind and then get better and. Wi-Fi just goes, you know, the, the latency and the and the and everything dropping. It, it it just it's just like a wave of the sea in Wi-Fi. It's just uh, I've used it so many years now. That's how I would describe it. The uh, latency of it, you know, the uh, and whether I don't whether especially with audio, you really notice it now with packets slowing down, speeding up, packet loss, and all those other things. You know, you you can only tell that by you know looking at some kind of program or looking you know, looking at a log that says so many packets are lost or whatever but when you're doing live audio and video i do both you know like this one up here is live video so when i uh, i'll barely reach up that high but you see i had i've already picked up my deal and it's finally showing up and uh, that's how far behind that cam that that camera is right now over the Wi-Fi, and that's the only thing I have on the Wi-Fi. I, uh, I don't, I'm not streaming right now. Only extra. Well, I do have my two. Only thing I have of my video making. I still have my uh, uh, security cameras going. For, you know, they're going 24/7, and they're all going over the Wi-Fi. And they do use our bandwidth even when there's nothing picking them up and streaming. You know, watching them. They're still sending out their signals. So their video signals be picked up. I'm sure it's a lot less bandwidth than when you're watching a video. I do have to, uh, well, I don't know how, it wouldn't have anything to do with my modem. I, I guess the thing with the modem is uh, I used to have, I used to really pretty much notice that it thinks the internet, my surfing was slowing down about once a week, sometimes longer, and I reboot, and I would reboot the modem and the router. Uh, ever since I got both of those uh, security cameras running last year, year and a half ago, something like that, uh, I have to. I, 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 if I don't do it, uh, I'm very lucky to not. You know, if I don't do it every day, uh, I usually do it when I get up, when I get started. I reboot the, you know, the modem first and then the router. Then I'll be trying to, you know, surf and watch videos and stuff, and then we'll be caching and not working. And it's way worse now. Ever since the whole you know, COVID thing uh, started and everybody started, you know, working from home and schooling from home and all that and using more, you know, so much more bandwidth than ever, ever, everybody, anyone ever expected would be doing it all, it's all of a sudden like that. Uh, you know, I have 200 megabits down and, uh, what is it, four? 
four and a half up. I think it's four up. Uh, and uh, I have and and my, with my ISP, it's usually a little. When I do a speed test, I did a few recently, and it usually shows to be a little more. Uh, like like I, I saw one that was. I saw one that was 215 or something like that megabits. And I think I saw one quite a bit higher than that down. And But then the upload is what you're using when you're streaming or when you're uploading files. The mo You know, that's what that, and that's not very much at all. That, that's one thing my ISP is not good about is the upload never have been. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> so uh, that's why I'm so concerned about the, what I'm using and setting it up. Um, the uh, <coughs> 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 excuse me. I guess I'm just gonna have to get off drop right now. <coughs> the uh, I'd have streamed a couple of times in the last couple of months. It did work okay. Well, I was doing it on the. Uh, Lenovo, and it's like I said, it's. I'm wondering if I'm going to have trouble when, even though this machine can handle it, I don't know if my connection can handle it. It, it because, um, okay, even though you're, you're testing and you're, you're still getting good speeds, uh, with, um, I have cable internet, and so. You're sharing that bandwidth with all your neighbors. Everybody on your, on your, uh, I don't remember what they call it, on your line, you know. You have the line. I know where the patch bay distribution box is uh, down around the corner, down the street and around the corner. So there, I don't know how many houses are on it. Well, of course, I know me and all my neighbors on this side of the street are on the same line. You know. Uh well, of course, yeah, well, that distribution box, I, I think it's divided up. I'm not sure how. I, I would think that it's 10 to 20 houses per line, you know, per. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, um, of course, it's just going to be daisy chain down, down the, you know, our, our lines are on the telephone poles. I think they did put in five or a few years, quite a few years ago now, but out, out in the front yard. But uh, that's eight. That we we have AT and T fiber. That's what's available, and they're much slower and just as expensive as what we've got. We have Spectrum. Uh, it used to be Charter, and uh, we don't don't have you know TV service, just internet. We don't have any use for all that, and it's just I'm a hundred. By the time you pay the extra, you know, for it all and the fees and stuff, it's a hundred and a quarter a year. I mean, a year, a month. And uh, I don't even watch TV, so I don't care one way or the other. So, uh, about the TV. Oh, I don't watch lots of videos, but I watch them online, mostly YouTube stuff. I, might, I, I just got to where I don't really like, you know, the shows, even the shows that I might would like. I've seen the same story played over and over and over at my age, you know, by just different people my whole life. So, you know, just about say the words before they say them, you know. I know how the story's going to end. A very uh, Sometimes I run into something. If I do watch something, I'm kind of nice to be surprised, you know. Not always. Sometimes you don't want. Sometimes the surprise is really bad and sad. That's the other thing. That's the thing I don't like most about the TV. It's just all so sad and upsetting and gruesome and they're and they're sitcoms. I mean I used to think sitcoms were stupid, but now they're just they're not even they're not even close to being funny and they make half time they make no sense whatsoever. So let's talk more about stuff that don't matter. Okay, so um yeah I've tested everything out. So now I'm just going to let's go see how our video looks right quick, or the size of it, I mean. Yeah, 1.6 gigabyte. Well, it's going to get big fast. I used to think they got big fast before, but see, I'm recording in uh, 
4K. Now I was recording in 1080p. I wish I could remember the resolution so I could say it right, but I can't. But um, I guess I could show it. Let's see. No, I'm just no sense in all that. All right, so I'm just gonna do my titles and test to see how this video turned out, and then uh, I'd be ready. It's almost one. It's now. It's almost one o'clock. I'm just dying to do. You know, I mean, I spent all evening getting it all set up, and I have to take most of it down, pretty much all of it down to go to bed. And so I really would like to at least get. I actually have two videos in mind that I want to make. You know, I'd like to at least get one. I'm afraid I'll just go for three or four hours and stay up all night. So I do that once I get started sometimes. <clears throat> I thought I was going to be able to watch my, I thought I was going to be able to monitor. Um, on my, I turned on the Lenovo i5 and I thought, well, I can just monitor my uh, screen. A big, big thing I can't do, uh, I used to do, I used to use one of the laptops, but mom's using that laptop and this. I was using this one over here, you can't see it. <clears throat> it's not in the picture yet. Yeah, to the right of the TV, uh, little uh, it's a Dell uh, six thousand. It's only one point six gigahertz single core. Well, it's, I'm running the Bane on it, the Bane eight, and it was able to. Uh, well, I'd have to, you know, I wanted to leave it running for an hour or two. Just this the preview of my video, but in a sm you know the small view, not the full view. I'm looking at myself up there. That's why it really makes me look up there when it's that big of a picture. <laughs> Usually it's right here, and I can kind of forget it. It's and I don't see it that good. I really like now when I'm doing something like if I'm using the endoscope, I will really be able to use this to see what I'm doing. That's going to be really cool. <clears throat> Except for I'm really going to have to be looking up instead of down at what I'm doing. So that'd be weird. But. Um, Anyway, it can't, it, it takes long for it to open up Firefox, you know, that little laptop, and get it up and check it. It's just way quicker to just do it on the machine I'm streaming on. But if something goes wrong, I don't know it. And unless this program says, oh, you dropped your stream, you know, and I, have, I have to be in this window. It'll come up down in here and tell me if there's something wrong. But if I'm over here showing something else, then uh, <clears throat> I won't know it unless it uh, get a pop-up or something. <clears throat> I don't think it pops up over in the other windows, <clears throat> which I don't like when programs do that anyway. But. So I turned on the Lenovo, and then I remembered, oh, yeah. I don't, I mean, I do have a wireless keyboard and mouse, but I can't stand using it. I'm so used to, I've been using this Microsoft, uh, this Hewlett Packard keyboard and this Microsoft Intelli mouse for about 18 years or more. Now I guess, and uh, <clears throat> I have two of these keyboards. With, uh, well, actually, kind of wore, I wore. Well, I didn't wear it completely out, but some of the well, the volume wasn't working worth the crap, and one of the one of the letters or something stopped working good. So I, I had saved this other brand new one for years. I actually bought it from my mom, and she didn't like it, so I kept it for a backup. I made sure I didn't use it all the time, so I wouldn't wear it out. So I've been using this one for five years or something now. <laughs> Anyway, I paid twelve bucks for for each of these. I still have the other one over there, but uh, <clears throat> if I kind of take it apart and clean it up with some electrical cleaner, it might be all right. The other one, this one's fine though. But anyway, um, it the 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 my mouse my favorite mouse and keyboard goes to my KVM switch and so whatever computer I switch to it goes to that computer. So um, I booted up the Lenovo one and just as soon as I started booting up I'm like oh wait a minute I won't be able to see like right now I'm on the I got the KVM switched on this computer so that I can see uh, <clears throat> um, you know control and see this 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 computer on this on the on the 4K deep monitor now if i want to see the <clears throat> the Lenovo i5 <clears throat> then i have to switch the KVM switch to the Lenovo i5 which automatically uh, disconnects 
you know the the video feed from that monitor. Well, it does, no, that monitor keeps getting its video because it's coming straight from the computer on the HDMI cable. It doesn't go. The only thing that goes through the KVM is the mouse and keyboard. So, but when I switch, I keep and, and that's so that's what makes me think, oh, I can do a, another computer all at the same time. But I keep forgetting that when I switch my KVM, I lose my mouse and keyboard on this computer. I can do it by using a wireless mouse and keyboard on this computer up here and leave the KVM on this one. But I can't stand to try to work that way. <clears throat> and I'm planning on doing a, a, all software stuff on this next video where I want my, I need my mouse and keyboard to work. I just can't work on it. I've tried doing it several times recently. I just get frustrated. I get mad. <clears throat> it just doesn't work. You know, the, the, Response isn't the same. The keyboard, I can't type on it, save my life. So, um, and that gives me an idea. Let's see. The only idea, only thing, I guess I could put the old, well, I still, I wouldn't have an, well, I do have other mice that I could use, like the ones that can't, there is, a, I actually have a mice. They're, they're like new because I never use them. They're, they're ball, old style ball mice, but they work good. But they I have two of these that came with this keyboard, the HP keyboard. And, they, and the HP keyboards actually have, they're so old, they're USB 1. But that's fine if you just put a mouse or something. But they're meant, well, there's two. There's one on either side of it. You can't see it in the view, but they're meant for you to plug the mouse into one side or the other. And if you want to, you can even plug in another thing like a, you know, USB stick or something. So, uh, they're so big, there's not enough room. The one good thing about the, the wireless keyboard is it's small, and it, I can fit it on here. This is a giant keyboard, and I can fit the, the, the wireless. Well, I've got it up there all the time, and I, but I have to, you know, get up like this to reach it. But I can put them together on my keyboard tray. And, and and but I forget which one to get on you know. Anyway, I could that'd be even worse probably using two identical keyboards. But I just got to thinking, well, I could put plug in that old keyboard and that mouse to the KVM switch, and then plug this one into my. I do have a USB hub now. <clears throat> I could plug this one that I like that I'm using all the time to the USB hub. And then it would always be connected to the server, and the and the other one to the uh, the to the KVM switch. It's not. It's just in a plastic bag to try to keep the dust off of it. It's sitting over there. Yeah, it's over there in my rack. Um, that's an idea. I used to. Uh, I could keep it on my tray that I, my it's really a keyboard tray, but I use it for all different kinds of things. Lately, I've just been setting stuff on it, and when I eat, I'll bring my tray in here and I'll set it on that, and then get set down and then pick it up. Because I have a rolling table, but it's always full of stuff. I had I cleared it off today so that I could have more room to work, but all that stuff needs to go back on there. It's on my bed. <clears throat> um, That would be a solution that I could, then I would be typing on the keyboard I like, and the other mouse I can stand for just, uh, all I'd be doing is just looking at the, I wish I could show what I'm talking about. Well, I'm not making, just talking to myself anyway. Um, maybe I'll end up. If I wasn't so confused and going in circles, it might, might have turned out to be a video, video that I'd want to upload, but... Um, Yeah. For at first, I thought, okay, if I could just get used to using when I'm streaming, just use the wireless. That's the easiest solution. Just use the wireless on this main machine. But I I did try it, and it just drives me nuts. But uh, yeah, this stayed here on my keyboard tray. I plugged it straight into the KVM. I mean, not the KVM. Take it out of the KVM. Put it in the USB hub, and then uh, 
everything else would be on the other HP keyboard and the HP mouse coming out of the KVM. And then whenever I want, like I could put the KVM on the Lenovo i5 and, um, and I could be able to just grab that mouse and like when I want to check my stream and do stuff like that. I can use the mouse left-handed. I could put it on the left side. Either put it over here on that tray and put, kind of get it where I can reach it. Uh, the way I've got things set up now, I really couldn't reach it too good. Or uh, I really, uh, just for monitoring my stream, all I really need is the mouse. You know, I don't really hardly use the keyboard for that. But it would be, what I was wanting is to have it on all the time. And then all I need to do, like if I need to check the sound, I click, you know, click it on, click it off. If I need to, because I don't have the sound hooked up to that machine because of the, when I plug it into my, when I plug it into my patch bay along with this one here, it makes noise. When it's all by itself, it was fine, but I didn't realize it was that machine causing the trouble. I, I, I one by one over the years, I, I unplugged every, I had like thir two to four, you know, computers on that, in that patch bay. Really two is all you could, if you go more, if you go three, then the set, it, it degrades the signal. It goes, it gets lower uh, it, it, with that patch bay. Well, and I can wrap my, that's a whole nother story. Uh, I've been thinking about wrapping my, my sound all through the uh, mixer because to maybe help with, uh, it depends on how, I, I have to think about how I would do it. Because even if I route it through the mixer, <clears throat> uh, the way it's going, it is meant for recording. You know, it's not meant to go out. To, it's not set up to go out to the mains. Don't go out to an amplifier. They go to input on on a sound card to record with. Uh, it does have a control room out, but I tried it out and it's noisy as heck. I didn't even want to use it for speakers. So unless it's just it was noisy on that particular. Like I think it was a no, probably the Novo i5 I was using. If it was not, if it was not be, you know, if I tried it now and it wasn't noisy, then that would be all right. Okay, well that's something I hadn't thought of. So um, there's another option. Yeah, because I, that's some, something I really do want is to be able to monitor my stream. Okay, well, I have to go now. I need a break. Okay, so I'm going to go and I'll see if everything worked. Okay.